Hello everyone and welcome to your weekly tarot guidance for March the 13th, 2023. Now, from an astrological perspective, it is a very intense week. It is also a week where certain energies, moods, thoughts, feelings do shift in a permanent way uh, at the very end of the week from an astrological perspective, but this shift is rather important because it may feel that as if we are waking up from a deeper dream that has been ongoing for the past two or maybe three years of our lives. And, you know, the awakening, so to speak, is, you know, two-sided. There is all the things that do surprise us, because this does cause a certain kind of retrospective look back at the past, even the recent past. Why? Well, because we do see it, everything, including the past, with different eyes. Because we, as I said, are awaking from a dreamlike state. And the dreamlike state was, you know, Saturn, before now being in the sign of Aquarius, the bigger dream, and Jupiter and Neptune and other minor power players being in the sign of Pisces. So the meeting of Jupiter and Neptune and Pisces was the highlight of the dream, so to speak, which was in April 2022, so last year. Now, however, the dream is kind of becoming real. So that means though all the elements of fantasy, of fiction, of carrot on the stick, even if it's divine, it's even if it's of divine nature, because sometimes for the greater good, for our own greater good, we do need allures. We do need, as I said, the illusion, the trail of breadcrumbs, the carrot on the stick. Call it whatever you want, but sometimes. The allure, the deception, so to speak, is actually of divine nature and benevolent, alluring us away from something that either is harmful or is keeping us in place, or that is basically the little tap on the shoulder that we need. We may, when sometimes in life, when we're not really attentive, when we're not really, you know listening to our inner or outer or whatever kind of guidance, sometimes the universe doesn't have to use force. Sometimes it can use the most ingenious ways to still make sure that we follow our guidance by giving it a different shape and form, what one with which we can work with, basically. Which our mind, our ego, our heart, whatever, something... It, within us, accepts. So, yes, sometimes the path towards the final destination or being on the journey does come with a little bit of sprinkles, the spices, the, you know, sugar, spice, and everything nice, which is also the Maya, but the just as the shadow uses it, it as its primarily tool, why should not... The opposite of the shadow do the same. So long story short, I needed this introduction to specify what kind of dream we're waking up from. Because this is much more important than just a situation that we thought as such, or a friendship, or a connection, or a job, or a career. Because this is much more collective. The illusion here, or the dream here, is actually us, our mindset, the way that which we have been in the flow in the past for our own good. But this is where now the flows are changing, things are rearranging, and Saturn in Pisces ultimately brings the reality factor, the real factor. So, as I said, our dream is absolutely ongoing, but without the sprinkle, without the mask, without the allure, without the illusion, this is where it is what it is kind of phase. Again, I'm so sorry for this long introduction, but I needed to specify where this is going. 
So immediately this is the first meaning of the Two of Swords reversed, where we see things so very differently. Where we see things, the Two of Coins, all that very materialistically, down-to-earth way, real, social, call it whatever you want, but we see it now. We might have seen this all along, but as I said, in the dream state, in the flow, or in the our cocoon, which had to birth this ultimately, from a rather more spiritual or psych or deeper psychological perspective, but that did give us, bestow upon us a very, very different vision. A vision where certain things were all not that much important, and other less important things had to be the core of everything, because that is how basically we learn, we evolve, we get prepared for something in a stage where collectively it was, basically everything was on halt. We were supposed to be inside our cocoons. Now, however, all the things that didn't matter all that much in the past two years, past perhaps even more, two or four, are starting to really, really matter. This is where the Sun reversed, the Nine of Swords reversed, and the Judgment reversed. This is such a really, really heavy combination because it does mean a soul level awakening but one which is very, very down to earth. One which is, in a way, also the sun reversed. Self-centered, ego-centered. But the ego is where, well, like it or not, everyone has to have something they project on the world, on others, etc., etc. And that which they project cannot be divine, cannot be all that much sacred, Everyone's kind of ego still have, has to look and feel and work and have the function of an ego. So this is where the higher ego, the higher self, so to speak, cannot really take the place of the lower one. So this is where everything has to readjust, including the ego. And this Nine of Swords, some things has to be have to be seen, have to be acknowledged, have to be processed, have to be decided, have to be cut out, have to be confronted, etc., etc. Why? Because, as I said, the higher self, the spirit, whatever it is that we might invoke into our help, cannot take the place of an ego unless we live in biblical times 500 years ago or when the world was much open to a non-modern lower ego, if that even makes sense. So, this is where, uh, this week, we might feel that our beings are almost sent into a certain weird, unasked for even, kind of alignment, which comes with a powerful reality check. But the reality check is not necessarily external one, rather internal one. You cannot shake off the decision. You cannot shake off what you feel. You cannot shake off your realigned, readjusted, reformatted wants, dreams, needs, wishes. They're the same, but maybe they're not executed the same. And that is very, very important. So this powerful reality check also sends us into a Ten of Swords reversed mode, where, yep, we need so very many closures within our lives in order for us to exactly live accordingly to this new vision, new reality check type of vision, which was bestowed upon us. And all this new vision needs is for us to reformat our balance. Not inner balance, but rather the executed balance, where the inner balance is lived. And the problem is with the Ten of Swords and the Five of Coins, life is not instant, so to speak, where certain things have to be taken off the shelf and resolved. And usually with the Ten of Swords and Five of Coins energy, 
these are like real life issues, if you know what I mean. Like, let me just give you a silly little example. There is that tooth which is not ultimately bothering you all that much. But you know it's not very well. So, maybe for some people out there, th th this final closure, that tooth is one of them. Why Saturn in Pisces? Where it's symbolic, but now it's also very, very important physically. So, chances are, the Ten of Swords reverse is where, yeah, you go and get that sorted out, even if, you did not expect it. This inner timing too. And this is just a silly little example. So whatever it is that this five of cups. Sorry, five of coins, sorry. That we need to do for ourselves. We need to get ourselves out of this scarcity or not okay or ill or vulnerable or in total chaos materially, mentally or what... It, this situation, we need to get ourselves out of there. The Eight of Coins, we are kind of working hard for the Nine of Cups to complete that which truly and without, you know, hesitation does need completion in our lives. And this Nine of Cups reverse gives us a wide range of, you know, expressions. Where this can be karmic, spiritual, in, it can be really, really anything that is meant for a completion. And we also have this Ace of Coins reverse. This is where all for the sake to finally um, live that which we were bestowed vision upon. The reality check. Seeing the world through a little tiny bit different eyes, different lens, different feeling, different judgment, different priorities. Uh, a, a, a great, how should I even say, Saturn in the sign of finalities ultimately. A r truly retrospective view. Not necessarily per se, but rather as an inner uh, energy where it is your being. Not necessarily just your mind, just your whole being is looking back at the past 30 years, maybe. And taking into consideration everything that it needs to. Because Saturn is the big, 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 big conclusions which do govern your life, especially in Pisces. Things that you will never, ever do again. Things, people, situations inner elements that you done once, you understand the lesson, never again. But there is this other expression of Saturn, where, you know, that thing, whatever that means to you personally, that you've delayed for so very many years, it doesn't even matter if it's important humanly or not, but it's time for that. From this like, let me give you a silly little example, which can be so insignificant, yet so significant. A person has always wanted a pet from childhood, a dog, your cat, or whatever. And through life, there was always dynamics which prevented this. And co then comes the Saturn in the sign of Pisces, where life offers that person an opportunity, but insistently. Where there comes an opportunity, they turn it down, but it comes back and comes back, almost like on a silver tray, and that person reaches the conclusion at one point, maybe out of sheer, let's say, spiritual frustration, like, what does the universe want to say to me with this? And they remember, well, you know, actually... When I was young, I always wanted the Labrador or the kitten or the pony or whatever. Well, I can actually make that happen now without any, you know, bigger consequences. So why not? Let's let's try it. Let Finally, let's try. And in three months, maybe that person is living 
in some kind of bliss. Or maybe the pet attracted someone else in that person's life and a new friendship alliance, whatever is born. So you, we don't know what certain experiences, what certain dreams, what certain wants that have been put into the, I want to say shelf, but better said the museum shelf where chances are we would not take it out again. And this Saturn can surprise us even with this. And I do believe that this Ace of Coins reverse is exactly something like that in our lives. Something that we really, really, how should I say, deserve to live. We might not see the importance of it, maybe a journey, a, as I said, a pet, whatever smaller dream, but one that is ultimately unfulfilled, a person has. You don't know where that leads. But right now, in life, karmically, maybe we need to kind of and don't understand this in a rather negative sense, but maybe we do need to struggle a little bit psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, materially. We might have a lot of fears, but our fears are no longer stopping us. The Nine of Swords reverse ultimately. So this is where... We're all struggling, we're all striving, we're all working. This doesn't necessarily have to feel heavy or strong or defeating or by any chance, but it does feel that this five of co co uh, coins, sorry, that I so want to get this done already. And the ten of swords, this is where we're really, really working towards that ending that we need. We need that ten of swords to be upright. As in, the experience consumed, the mind gets it, the mind lets it go, everything is fine, and the new horizon is coming. Now, all of this might be absolutely fine, so to speak, individually, where chances are we are doing something very, very important for the self, but collectively, however, well, this is where... The combination of these cards might represent economic troubles, but on a larger sense, where austerity measures and cutbacks, strikes, economic collapse, but in a either field or industry or in a way which is either unexpected or even ridiculous, because it would go against the common sense. But this might send, and again I say, not the individuals, but rather more relevant groups of people into panic mode. Because this does mark, as I said, the beginning of either austerity, restriction, um, cutbacks, the need to, you know prioritize fin financial resources in a very, very different way. And the five of co co coins many times represents that it is exactly comfort, easiness, luxury, everything that we do not necessarily need is what we're saying bye-bye to collectively. So what does that even mean? So, for some people out there, or better said, you know, for a part of the world, financially speaking, this is becoming a nightmare, really, where from bad news to worse news, where, oh no, it's not gonna be okay, especially in the close future. So, this might be fearful news, but as I said, financially speaking, while for, you know, other expressions of this energy, this is where some industries which, as I said, do provide more pleasure or luxury or things that usually um, give comfort, 
are gonna start struggling a little bit. This is where signs are everywhere of what either us individually or collectively, but within our professions, industries, wherever we are immersed into materially, what we can expect there. So this is gonna be a rather interesting week. And also the five of coins, health problems. Saturn in the sign of Pisces, that's the immune system. Saturn, the restriction, constriction, or a reality check where, you know, if we upset our immune system for years and years, of course, we will be feeling it after a time. But this can represent, you know, the call for healing. Where the problems are at first more minor, but they do call us to pay attention to our healing, to our physical health, etc. And if we do follow it through, there is no need to worry. But as I said, this can represent collective energy as well. So the Five of Cups is... Well, either illness, but, you know, what kind of illness? It doesn't necessarily have to mean the contagious form of viruses. It can represent illness due to a lack of something, negligence, um, a different kind of reaction to an external element, for example, a natural calamity or in some part of the world, extreme, extreme heat, extreme cold. So exposure to something that can also represent a lot of health problems and crisis situations. But as I said, this is a week which prepares us not just for the upcoming equinox in Aries, which is oh, the start of the astrological new year and in so many ways important every year, but this year especially. But I know I said that last year and before last year, but I didn't really lie because both of those equinoxes were really, really, really important, just like this one. But after the equinox, Pluto touches Aquarius, which is act actually a few hours after the equinox, a few days, let's say a few days after, the because officially it's on the 23rd. But anyway, that's very, 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 very big. And then Jupiter visit, starts visiting from the 15 degrees of Aries to the 30 degrees of Aries, which is also a part of Aries, which is extra, you know, intense with combustion. It is extra, sometimes, you know, sovereign, but in a conflictual way. So we can also expect very big moves justice-wise and direction-wise taking place in the world out there due to Jupiter. So it is going to be a very intense month for all of us. So this concludes today's guidance. Thank you so much for listening. And I'm wishing everyone a lot, a lot of strength, a lot of clarity, inner clarity, and ultimately faith. Because this is where truly faith can be the greatest armor, the greatest weapon, or anything that you do need. Thank you again for listening. Thank you for all the love, all the support, and for keeping me alive. Until next time, bye for now.